this time we're actually uh, taking your attention towards something very, very important. Because we do notice that as a climate change threat rapidly worsens, the big question that comes to our mind is, can aviation make the transition to a low carbon future or perhaps even reach net zero emissions? So our next topic, in fact, is to do with net zero aviation and the big question, is it a distant real, uh, reality? We will be joined by none other than uh, Tony Douglas, who's the group CEO at the Hard Aviation Group, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, talking about Tony, well, uh, let me also inform you all that uh, he's been part of this very prolific uh, industry. And it's only befitting to gather his insights, especially when we're talking about aviation again. So it looks like we're going to bring back your attention towards uh, a flight of new insights folding in uh, through this session. Uh, the big question on your mind, so let's find out the answer from Tony. And while he was, he's been leading the Etihad Aviation Group, uh, he comes with nearly 20 years of international leadership experience in transportation, infrastructure, as well as government sectors. And he joined Etihad Aviation Group from UK's Ministry of Defence, where he served as a CEO of the uh, defense and uh, equipment and support department responsible for procuring and supporting all equipment and services for the British Armed Forces. So ladies and gentlemen, time to uh, indulge in this conversation featuring none other than Tony Douglas. Good morning. It's an absolute pleasure to be involved in something that's quite normal again, an international conference, and there's no better way to get into a really important debate when it comes to environmental sustainability and aviation. Obviously running a global international airline, it's no surprise to us the challenge that aviation quite rightly faces. In a world where we want to have global connectivity, where we acknowledge that there is a growth of demand that is likely to continue to build, but coupled with the fact that the physics of flight and current propulsion technologies means that it will be a carbon producer, it's fair to say that this is the industry's biggest challenge ever. And I think we're even more focused than normal because, of course, we're starting to come out of a pandemic which really has given great stress and challenge to our industry. But as I've said many times before, the one thing I can confidently predict is the end to the pandemic. I can't be terribly precise as to exactly when it will happen, but equally, the one thing I can confidently predict is the challenge for environmental sustainability with aviation is going to go on for decades. So it leads to the need for collaboration. And when I say collaboration, I mean collaboration with a big capital C. I'm talking about governance, I'm talking about regulators, but I'm also talking about consumers. The way all of us come together with the industry, with the manufacturers, with the technology providers to find incremental solutions that will allow us to crack this problem. So corporate responsibility, it's the kind of thing that many companies talk about. It's the kind of thing that we see in annual reports these days. But for us at Etihad, we've tried to do something very, very, very different here. We've got two particular aircraft in our fleet. They're personalities in their own right. One's the Greenliner, and the Greenliner is a Boeing 787, a remarkably efficient modern aircraft powered by General Electric. And the second aircraft is the Sustainable 50, which is an Airbus A350 powered by Rolls-Royce XWB engines. And we've been using these two aircraft almost as a go-to place for anybody out there to help collaborate those incremental changes. And the Greenliner, which has been running for over two years now, has been particularly successful in that regard. So working with partners as broad as NASA, the North American Space Agency, obviously the power providers that I've mentioned before, but many smaller uh, technology providers, we've been able to prove that this problem is solvable. It's certainly not gonna be easy, but it's very much solvable. So allow me to give what I think is a really encouraging example. In October of last year, we ran a sustainable flight on the Greenliner 
from London's Heathrow Airport to Abu Dhabi. And we were able to reduce 72% of the carbon footprint from the equivalent flight in 2019. So this is a big step in the right direction. And some people might be forgiven for saying, well, if you can do that so quickly, is this problem as big as everybody's saying? Well, of course it is, because allow me to unpack the 72%. The equivalent flight in 2019 was an Airbus A380, so a much heavier aircraft with four engines. So the efficiency of a carbon structured aircraft with modern power obviously made quite a significant difference. The second thing was using sustainable aviation fuels, and this is a big part of the solution going forward. Currently, prohibitively expensive, it's three times X more, but also there's a challenge on supply. So in this particular flight, 38% of the fuel was sustainable aviation fuel. We simply couldn't get any more from an availability standpoint. We also worked on optimum route planning to be able to take the most direct route between London and Abu Dhabi. It saved us 40 minutes in time and with a continuous descent allowed us to save the equivalent of six tonnes of CO2. And finally, working with a really innovative uh, technology provider, we were able to use predictive technologies looking at barometric pressure, air temperature, weather patterns and such like to reduce the condensation trails, those things, the lines you see in the sky. Add all of those things together, 72% improvement. Now, what that brings us back to collaboration with is the fact that two of them in particular, which is the shortest possible route, most efficient route, and the availability of sustainable aviation fuel aren't currently repeatable for us. So this is why I say it's collaboration with a capital C. We're all this in this one together, but as you can see, there is a solution in the making. So I also mentioned the way in which consumers have such a fundamental part to play in this as well because their consciousness as to how they choose to fly and the carbon consequences of it will increasingly become something that influences everybody's choices. So with Etihad, we've made a very conscious choice ourselves to commit to a 20% net carbon footprint improvement by 2025, a 50% carbon improvement by 2035, and 100% uh, improvement by 2050. Now back to the consumer and the way in which he and she makes decisions around this, we've tried to bring programmes into place such as the world's first green loyalty programme, the Etihad Corporate Conscious Choices programme. Now what does this mean? This means that if you're a corporate and you have to travel through necessity, you have the opportunity to be a green travel member of our loyalty programme. Conscious choices means that you can elect to pay an environmental surcharge and choose the amount that you're prepared to donate then into sustainable aviation fuels, into forestry carbon offset programmes, or into helping us plant in mangroves here in Abu Dhabi as part of that carbon offsetting process. Equally, the loyalty miles that you accrue, the Etihad guest miles, you can also donate them in the same way into sustainable aviation fuel, into carbon offsetting through forestry, or again, into planting mangroves. The reason why I mention mangroves in particular is because of course, they're an amazing species. Some of you may not be aware of this, but they're up to four times more efficient in the way in which they consume CO2 than a normal forestry offset programme. So we've committed big here in Abu Dhabi to the Abu Dhabi mangrove forest. And we're really trying to encourage people to see how they can participate in the way in which they offset through the Corporate Conscious Choices programme and individually into contributing to this really exciting process. The average mangrove over a 25 year mature life consumes 300 kilograms of CO2. 
It's a home for small fish. It's a water filtration specialist. It's an out and out winner. So that's one of the reasons why we're so keen to sponsor mangroves as well. So the importance therefore of corporate conscious choices, that green loyalty program is back to broader corporate responsibility. It means that the people who engage in travel in such a way can take the benefit with being carbon accredited for the way in which their staff have then committed to travel. So this goes back to the broader collaboration piece where you've not just got governments, regulators and airlines, but also corporates and consumers themselves playing a responsible part in how we improve. Now you can imagine a corporate who elects not to take that conscious choice and continue to travel in a conventional way, of course, will probably come under much more scrutiny. But the reason why we're doing this is really important back to collaboration because the way we'll potentially crack the availability challenge with sustainable aviation fuel is to create more economic interest in the fashion that I've just described. So in summary, is this a really big challenge? Yes, of course it is. Is there a solution? There is a solution, but it's gonna require all of us to collaborate together. It will be lots of small things that add up to a big solution but I think we can all be confident that over time, aviation can play its part in this regard.